Mud Fossil University, Roger once again, today talking about the Yucatan Peninsula and the mistaken assumption that it was a meteor impact, which it was not, and secondly that it caused the um, KT boundary clay layer, which it did not. Uh, thirdly, that it caused the extinction of the dinosaurs, which it did not. Fourthly, that it happened 65 million years ago, which it did not. So, let's start with the first thing, a meteor impact. It was not a meteor impact. I looked at this very carefully. They've done a bunch of research. They did sonograms. They did core drilling. They did analysis. They did all kinds of things. And it is biology. It's not a major crater impact and they talk about shock quartz it's not shock quartz I have shock quartz laying all over the place here they are lungs lungs and that's what they are right there these are little this is a little tiny one but this is the kind of stuff they talk about oh shock quartz is the only place it comes from no absolutely incorrect all of these things that they're talking about are based on assumptions that are just totally wrong so let's talk about what's really here first of all they were doing mining here watch this you see over here, look at, the, look at the area here. Now we're going to go in here and look at this very carefully. What does that look like and how would that have come about? What would do that? What would do that? I right, look at that very carefully. Now we're going to look at how it slopes and what are these little globs here? Well, how would that happen? Well, I looked at this very carefully for a long time because I was perplexed, I have to be honest with you. Now, what I did determine, and I think is pretty accurate, is that this is an extremely slow slope going up, where this goes from this line here from the bottom to here is over a mile. Here, right down here, it is um, 7,000 feet deep. Right up here, it is 3,000 feet deep. That's 4,000 feet in a zillionth of an inch. Over here, it goes from 8,600 feet up to the whole distance up here is only uh, 4,000 feet this far. So there's a huge, huge, huge difference in slope. Now, so let's take that into account first of all. Secondly, what are all of these little bumps all over the place? So let's look at that a little bit and, and think about it carefully. What, what would do that? And what is the, 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 the nature of these bumps? Well, all of these bumps are actually depressions. And they are all running down in this direction. So at, at, at my estimation is they were soft when these little depressions were made and that allowed them to flow down this way a little bit because of gravity and I can tell you that's a fact because if I go in the center of this one here I am at uh, 6,500 feet below and if I go up to here I'm at 5,800 feet all right so that's in other words, it's, it's deeper here than it is up here. Now, what about from here to here? So if I go to back to here, I'm at 6,500 feet. And I go up to here, I'm at 6,100 feet. So I've dropped 400 feet coming down this way. It's sloped this way and gooey running this way. How could that be these depressions? Though? Why are these depressions instead of bumps? And I have, I think, what makes sense to me is because they were mining here, and I'm going to show you why I can almost prove that, uno momento. But first of all, I would say that they had like these little tractor looking things out here that they'd come up and drive their stuff up and put it on and go blip, 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 blip. They just drop in little buckets all over the place. That's what they do now. They come over to a conveyor belt, they run it up, and they drop it in piles. Just the way they do it. It's been done for that way since these guys did it. Now, what else in this area makes it make it seem like they're doing mining? I mean, that's pretty obvious to me, but what else is there? Well, if we follow this down, like, they would have had to remove this stuff. I think this is spoils. 
after they do whatever they did with it, alchemy, they took me metals and minerals out of it, and then they dumped the spoil. And I think they did that in another place too. They took it out of here over into this area, and I'll show you why I say that. Because I think they took it over here and dumped it right into here. And then they plowed it into here. Now, the reason I say that is because if you look at this, it's extremely squared off. And you can see a plow mark, a plow mark, a plow mark, a plow mark. You can see over here that they they just literally plowed it and it just flowed down the hill. And then they got to one mark and then they got to another and then they got to another. And that's exactly the way they do it now in, in dumps and places where they have a lower area. They keep pushing it and it keeps falling out and they keep back and back and back and back. And that will flow out exactly like what you're seeing there. I don't think that's a natural you know, formation. I don't think that's natural. And it's right here in the proximity of, of what I would say is pretty obvious mining. So I'm going to go with that. You can make your own decision. But I've been looking all over the earth and I'm finding things everywhere. Everywhere. It's everywhere. And uh, they just haven't been looked at in the correct thing. I mean, look at that. Look at the way the, the islands line up. It's push to push to push. And they get to the top of the surface and they just keep moving back this way. Push, 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 push. <laughs> so that's it for today. Mud Fossil University Mining in a Yucatan Peninsula. And go and look up the research they're doing there. It has nothing to do with a meteor impact. Oh, by the way, let's get back to the KT boundary. That is a layer of clay. Clay. Listen to me. Clay. Anybody that's in mud fossils understands that your skin is made of clay and silicon, and that is what you present to the world. Silicon embedded in clay, which is your red um, fleshy material with the silicon, and it makes the skin. That erodes away, and it creates clay. Well, when the great flood came, which was 4,300 years ago, it created the KT layer, which is clay. And they say, oh, there's iridium in there. Well, obviously there's iridium, because there is iridium in you. There's uranium in you. And if you were to be stripped of your skin, and they took it down and figured out what the chemistry was in there, there's iridium, there's uranium, there's gold, there's silver, there's copper, there's magnesium, there's manganese, every single molecule that comes in transition metals and metals is used in your body to move the chemistry around in your body. They're transition metals. They pinch a little piece of another molecule and they drag it down and they drop it off using one single electron. It is elegant. That is the way the body works and without those transition metals, you will be sick. And the reason you have those transition metals in you is because bacteria create them using chemistry. Alright, bacteria are smarter than the best chemists we have on the planet right now. That's a fact. Bacteria comes to say, hey, we need some gold today. Alright, go get uh, Bactrocillus down there. He's the guy that makes the gold. He goes out and he just works with the products that you have ingested. And he says, hey, let's make some gold. Now, I'm not exactly certain how they do it. Whether they just harvest it or whether they literally construct it. But they will harvest gold. And now there is bacteria, they say, that creates gold. I'll show you that. All right, here's what it says right here about turns bacteria making gold. Kashefi and Brown are the ones who have created this compact laboratory that uses the bacteria Cuprovitus metallodermis to turn gold chloride, a toxic chemical liquid you can find in nature, into 99.9% .9 pure gold. That's what the bacteria do. And what they do, it's not actually the bacteria that are doing it, they create a little, a, what's called enzymes and enzymes are things that go and they they have the ability to crack open bonds all right everything in you is bonded to something else literally it all everything wants to get this hooked up with something else they don't want to just float around by themselves so these enzymes go in and they say hey you're hooked to this uh, other atom here I got to get you away from there 
I'm an enzyme. I'm going to cut you off. And they cut it off and they collect it and they bring it down to the blood so the blood can use that transition metal to carry around products in your body to places and to pick up other things and bring them to places to get rid of them. That is how your body works. Anyway, I don't know why I got off on that. But anyway, the bacteria is just as good a miner as the ancient people were and probably better than the newest miners we have today. I'll tell you, this is just, it's, 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 it's such a web of, of interactivity that it's, uh, it all makes sense when you start looking at it. I mean, it just all makes sense. You just have to open your eyes and stop shutting things out and stop trying to stop information. And that's what I'm finding in, in academia. They don't want this stuff out. And I have no clue why. Whether it embarrasses them or it, it, it offends them because they have been told to read something that was nonsense. And now that they're all upset because they paid all that money to do that and they want somebody else to have to pay all that money to read nonsense, I, I don't see it. I think it's time to get rid of the nonsense. Let's just see. If it's nonsense, it's nonsense. If it isn't, it isn't. It's as simple as that. You don't turn your eyes away from something because you say, oh, I read something else that doesn't even make sense to what you said. I don't want to go read my books. I don't want to read your books. Well, <laughs> I'm not showing you anything to read. I'm showing you factual things that you can see with your eyeballs. You don't have to come and read 20 different hours worth of papers to get so confused that you agree with anything. It's like, how do you get those people to confess? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I always wondered how they got people to confess when, when they didn't do something, but now I understand it. It's like giving them an academic paper. <laughs> yeah, I did it, I did it, I swear I ought to, I ought to confess to anything. <laughs> but, you know, use your eyes. <laughs> I can tell you this stuff simple in minutes, and they take hours and days to explain something, because it's a fantasy. All right, stay with Mud Fossil University and, and, and uh, confront these people, all right? I love you all. God loves you who is allowed at Mud Fossil University.